Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Tonight's tale, my sister told me a funny joke after her funeral by Robot Vampire. I'm not a strong man. I never have been. Yet, I remain the only one who didn't have a glassy coat covering my eyes. I stood in line to see my sister one last time amidst a sea of strangers who regurgitated cliché condolences. I'm sorry for your loss. If you need anything. She was so young, so pretty. Yes, I understand that they felt a small amount of grief for my family, but that probably didn't stop them from going home that night and fucking the shit out of their wives, their husbands, or even some stranger they met at a bar. Each time someone came up to me, I just imagined them banging their body into someone else. Still, I gave a faint smile and told them thank you. Being back in town was always nostalgic for me, especially after being away for three years. There was just something about being back in town after your sister blows her brains out with a pistol that makes it a little less of a trip down memory lane, however. The line moved slowly. I'm not sure when the memories started to come, but they showed themselves into my mind without bothering to wipe their feet first. I remembered my sister when we were little. I told her I had an imaginary friend once, and she got really excited. She kept on asking me what mine looked like and what its name was. I made up something on the spot and told her it was a monkey named Cheeseball. She would go on and on about the one she had, how it was a whisper just beyond the corner of a wall, a shy thing named Gunter trying to talk to her. I always thought that she was dumb because of it and it took me years before I told her that I had never had an imaginary friend. The line lurched forward, a few old people queued behind me. I looked around the room and remembered thinking of how none of our high school friends were here. I was never really popular, but she was a social butterfly. She was never without a date or some sort of boy toy, though she still insisted that her imaginary friend was actually still her best friend. Though later in the years she started talking about how mean he was actually becoming. How his whispers were harsher and how he never had anything nice to say about anyone. She talked about how he was starting to peek around corners a dark blur with piercing but hollow eyes. I didn't care about that. I didn't care about anything. High school is where I developed clinical depression. Instead of talking about it, though, I planned to fix the problem permanently. I always thought that I was going to be the one to pop a cap in my dome piece, not my sister. Of course, I couldn't show how I felt in front of my family or my friends. I especially couldn't let my sister see how truly empty I was. How every laugh echoed inside of me and made me worried if people bought the feigned laughter. I had my own secret area up in the attic. I had a lot of stuff stashed away up there. A bottle of Jack Daniels that I'd stolen from a liquor cabinet that belonged to one of my friend's parents. Uh, had a bunch of suicide notes that I had written out. Some were apologetic, others were hateful. I wrote them in case I drank enough liquid courage to actually do the deed. I used to go up there and grab the gun that I had hidden away. One that uh, my sister had found in Dad's study room. She played with it one day, and I took it away from her just before lecturing her on how dangerous guns were and how she should never play with them. 
I used to hold it to my head and pull the trigger, letting it click against my temple. I remember lusting for a bullet to tear through my skull and let death fill the hollowness inside me. Dad, surprisingly, never asked about the gun before he died of cancer. I don't think Mom had ever known that he even had it. Mom was sitting down at the funeral. She didn't bother to get up even once. I was nearly at the casket, and the closer I got, the more I remembered when my sister and I stopped talking. The last words we exchanged. We were getting ready to go off to college, and she came to me, worried about her stupid imaginary friend. She seemed so worried, and I feel like an asshole for disregarding it. She talked about how he wasn't shy anymore, how he'd be in the same room with her, standing just at the edge of her peripheral vision. I remember being fed up with it, with her, with everything. I told her how stupid she was having an imaginary friend still, how she was probably psychologically fucked up. I told her that Gunter wasn't real. I told her cheese ball wasn't real. I told her that it was all a lie. If a human being could shatter into pieces, that would have been the moment that I saw my sister disintegrate. We stopped talking after that. I, I guess her made up friend had meant a lot to her. And then I stood over her motionless body. She had a faint smirk on her face. I didn't touch her, didn't kiss her, or say anything to her. I just glanced at her for a hard few seconds and then walked away. She really was beautiful. I decided that I was done with the funeral and made my trip back home. I needed some of that jack that I had hidden away in the attic. I was expecting everything to be covered in dust, seeing how I'd been gone at college for three years. Instead, everything looked exactly how I'd left it, except there was no more Jack. Of course, I muttered to myself, picking up the empty bottle. Then I noticed that all of my letters were gone. So was the gun. Instead, there was only one single letter in there. It was on a piece of printer paper written with a sharpie. Hey bro, I'm sorry, but if you're reading this, chances are you already went to my funeral and you know what happened. I'm sorry. That's all I can say. I'm sorry. Gunter was getting more and more aggressive and I couldn't deal with it anymore. I know you told me never to play with guns. But I guess it went in one ear and right out the other. And that was it. That was it. The last thing my sister said to me. I uncapped the bottle of whiskey, not taking my eyes off the paper, and I tried to swallow its contents, even though I knew it was empty. I threw the bottle, and I started laughing. I laughed until the tears cascaded down my face. I laughed until I wasn't sure if I was truly laughing or sobbing. It was all my fault. All my fault. So stay scary, my wildlings. Remember, if you love them, listen to them. Really listen. And make the most of your nights.